Hey everybody, welcome back to What's For Dinner. Hope you're all doing doing well. Hello. It's been a few minutes since we've uh, checked in with you guys. We had a little bit of a hiatus. Had some stuff called life going on the last few days, so um, we got a little bit busy, but as you can see, speaking of busy, Teresa's in the kitchen busy right now. So what do you have going on here today, hon? So we made ribeyes, and then you made me two fillets because yes. where we got these ribeyes, I don't like them. Charcoal grilled. Yep. Yep. So I like mine a little bit more um, on the well done side or the medium side, and then Teresa likes hers a little bit more on the medium rare. So yep. we did that, and then we have um, butter. So Teresa likes. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So I like the Kerry Gold. You're going to use the garlic yeah, butter. I'll use the garlic, which we get at, at Sam's Club, by the way, at Chef Chamois. And then of course we'll. Um, Teresa likes to use the uh, Redmond's Real Salt, and I like the um, Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Seasoning. So. Someone asked a question: If we should use fat or if we could use fat. And so I say yes to both. I don't think you have to go around with a stick of butter and eating it like a candy bar, but I don't think we should be afraid to use fat. Now, after time, I'm talking a couple years, when you get to a, a plateau, like say you were 250 and now you're 150, but your frame says you could be about 130. You could start taking away the fat you eat and you'll eat a little bit more of your own fat, okay? So you could do a moderate fat as opposed to high fat. In the beginning though, it's essential to use fat, otherwise you're gonna be starving. Yeah, and you need the energy because your, yeah. body, your body needs to learn how to use the fat for energy and right. replace the sugar. Right, so you can use fat and definitely in the beginning you should use fat. Okay, so, good stuff. Um, all right, and then bacon. Yep, air fried bacon too. Yep. Delicious. And then, and then what else do we have going on over here? Eggs. And I made an extra one because I'm going to, besides my meat and cheese I eat at lunch at the office, I'm going to take one egg yolk and eat an egg yolk also for protein. Oh, uh, for lunch? At, at for work. lunch, yeah. Okay. Because I just, you know, it's hard to get all your protein in, but there's a sure. lot in that little egg yolk. There is a lot. So. Yum. And then this is our creamy Brussels sprouts. Oh, I hope there's Brussels sprouts in there. Yeah, they're at the bottom. So what? Uh, <laughs> what's going on here? So usually I get two pounds of Brussels sprouts and they always go to waste because the kids aren't here tonight. So I probably, this is probably three quarters of a pound. It's hard to tell. And then I just put a stick of butter in there, fried them till they got soft. You fresh pressed garlic in there, mm -hmm. fried them till it all melted. And then I poured in heavy whipping cream just to the, just to the look now. Like I don't measure anything but I like it creamy, so a lot of heavy whipping cream, shredded Parmesan, shredded mozzarella, and then I cooked it in the oven until it browned to your liking. Mm -hmm. I like it a lot, uh -huh. just so everybody knows. <laughs> Not a big fan of Brussels sprouts, but we make it two different ways. You've probably seen it both if you've been watching the, um, our videos for a while, but this is my favorite way to do it, the creamy, cheesy um, Brussels sprouts. And then Teresa does another one that she, um, yeah, she broil. just broils basically with um, balsamic vinegar and cheese, and that's really good too. Yeah. So, um, Metabolically speaking, will yeah. any of this stuff that you've made tonight cause our blood sugar and insulin to spike? No. no. Nothing will happen. It's a very boring day on your glucose monitor if you're wearing one. But if you added a potato or mashed potatoes or mac and cheese or a roll or pasta, then your blood sugar is going to spike. All this fat is going to be stored as fat and your body's going to have to use the glucose circulating. Mm -hmm. So, and we yeah. all have plenty of glucose. Um, maybe not circulating, but stored. So you use up the glucose that's going around like from the banana you just ate. And then over time, you're gonna deplete all your glycogen stores and your muscles and tissues. Then you're gonna get to your fat, but a lot of you don't make it that far. So. Yeah, so what you're trying to say, I think, is we're trying to clear out the carbohydrates and the sugars out of the system, yeah. and that way our body can tap into the stored fat and use that for fuel versus you know using the foods that we're eating on a regular basis for food, right? Yeah, for, I for, mean, sorry for fuel. Yeah, you cannot lose weight if your insulin is high. Insulin will block fat loss, um, so you have to get your insulin low. So if you're eating all these lies, we've been told. I mean, you're eating every two to three hours um, to keep your blood sugar stable. To keep your blood sugar stable, eat like this. Your blood sugar goes nowhere. It'll be stable. Yeah, and you can prove that out with a glucose monitor. Right. I, I was just going to say, all you have to do is get a glucose monitor. Ask your provider to, to prescribe one or hopefully no hiccups. But this summer, June supposedly, um, glucose monitors will be over the counter, no prescription required. So get one yourself and go see what's happening when you eat. Mm. When and you I, eat your oatmeal and your bananas. Yeah, and you mentioned a good point there. You, you use the term fat loss. Mm -hmm. So something that we want to be very specific about here is that we are trying to achieve fat loss, not weight loss. So, you know, when you, when I think of weight loss, you know, you go to like Jenny Craig or if they're even around anymore or Weight Watchers or whatever the, the, the flavor of the day is with regards to fat dieting, 
and um, and you go and you know the weight loss is the thing you're chasing the scale all the time. Yes. And we, Teresa and I, we don't care about weight loss. What we care about is fat loss. So I guess where I'm trying to get to this uh, or, or trying to get to with this whole uh, conversation is. Teresa's like first passion was hormones. And so we started off as a hormone only clinic. We didn't, metabolic health came late later on, yeah. but it was a natural progression. And so what we would get is we would get patients who got in, especially females, and they would get on your hormone program and they would start taking testosterone and estrogen and some other hormones and they would start gaining weight. And they're like, wait a second, I'm supposed to be losing weight. Why am I gaining weight? Right. And so we tried to explain to them, hey guys, like, listen, you're gaining weight, but it's not fat weight you're putting on, it's muscle weight. Yeah. And muscle weight is metabolic. Muscles, uh, for every pound of muscle you have, you burn about 20 calories a day. Yep. So let's talk about that really quick. You have what's called a basal metabolic rate or a resting metabolic rate. That's the number of calories your body burns every single 24 hours just to keep you alive. Doesn't include all the stuff like stress and exercise and, and other things. And right. so muscle is the largest organ in, uh, as far as uh, calorie burning goes. Yeah. Muscle burns more calories than anything else in the body. Like I said, about 20 calories per pound of body weight per day. Excuse me, I'm getting ready to cough here and I'm trying to hold it back, but <clears throat> sorry about that. So anyway, where I'm going with this is that, so if we're trying to achieve fat loss and we're trying to raise our metabolic, our resting metabolic rate as high as possible, we wanna put on as much lean muscle as we can. Yep. So anyway, the folks that were on the hormones, the ladies that were on the hormones and whatnot, were putting on muscle, which was in turn, it was making them way more and they were chasing the scale, so it was kind of freaking them out. But what they didn't realize was they were put because they were putting on muscle, it was burning the fat right. more effectively. So they were so so the crux of this whole thing is this: is that we started uh, we started doing uh, body composition analysis at the clinic. So the body composition analysis will will determine your your fat content of your body, your water content of your body, and your muscle content. And you're able to look at that. So we started showing these people, hey, look, like this is where you started. You had this amount of body fat, this amount of muscle, and then as they progressed through the program, we were able to show them that, yeah, you're putting on weight, but you're putting on lean muscle, and look, your fat is decreasing, mm -hmm. and, your, and your you know water weight pretty much stays the same. Yeah. So I hope that all made sense. I know it was kind of a long description, but um, I just wanted to tell you the difference between fat loss and weight loss. So when you go on things like I did back in the 2000s, Fentermine, or now the weight loss injectables, that's fast weight loss, you're gonna lose lean mass. And at my age, I'll be 53 next month, but when you're 30 and 40 and up, it is much harder to replace the muscle. So these women, maybe 60 and over, that are going on these weight loss injections, they're gonna lose muscle mass, and they may not get it all back because they're you know, older, and it's hard to do that. So when they say, oh, your metabolism changes at 40 or 30, it does a little, but more than anything, we lose muscle mass. And so that increases fat mass. And then um, we stop moving as much. You got mm -hmm. kids, now you got injuries like I do from running and constantly trying to outrun my diet, but still being overweight, so. Yeah, and going back to the other forms of weight loss, like the Jenny Craig or the Weight Watchers kind of thing. So they put you on a calorie restrictive diet, which means you're restricting your three macros, fat, protein, and, yeah. and um, carbohydrates. Well, the problem is, is that when you reduce the amount of protein you're eating, you're going to lose muscle mass, okay? So over a period of time while you're on these Weight Watchers diets, you're losing weight. You're losing some fat, you're losing muscle, and possibly water, um, water weight as well. But here's the problem is that at the, uh, these, weight, these, these different diets that they put you on, you're going to be hungry on yes. those diets. Eventually, the hunger is going to win and you're going to go back to eating the way you were eating before because you didn't correct all the issues that needed to be corrected properly. Yeah. So what happens with these yo-yo diets is you guys or somebody loses a lot of weight, muscle and fat, and then when they go to put it back on because they eventually get hungry again and start eating the way they ate before, um, now, then, you have no muscle. now you have no muscle and you're putting it all back on in fat. Now imagine you go through a couple of decades of your life and you've done three or four of these yo-yo diets like that. You've lost all this muscle. Um, I mean, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, so exactly. I hope this all made sense. What and we're back saying. in the day, I had a friend who did Jenny Craig. This is back in the 90s. And I said, come work out with me. And she said, oh, I'm not allowed to. While you're on this diet, you can't work out. And at the time, I was like, why? But now I get it. Like, oh, the scale's going to go up if you try to put on muscle. Mm. Or you're going to be tired because you don't have enough protein and calories to counteract the exercise you're going to do. So either way, they tell them <coughs> not to. Now, this was a long time ago. I don't know what they're doing now. but Yeah. Yeah, well, it's still points and all this other stuff. But anyway, uh, we're at 10 minutes right now. So hey, um, yeah, we went long today. Sorry. So um, tell us what you guys are having for dinner. 
feel free to ask questions, reach out to us, you know, comment on here or whatnot. And hope we, to see you at church We tonight. hope to see you at the prayer meeting tonight yep. or at church or whatever flavor you've got going on. Yep. Uh, we're in your neck of the woods. And we love you guys and God bless you and we'll see you all next time. Bye.